Life, the Universe and Everything by Douglas Adams Chapter 7 The Bistro Mathic Drive is a wonderful new method of crossing vast interstellar distances without all that dangerous mucking about with improbability factors. Bistro Mathics itself is simply a revolutionary new way of understanding the behaviour of numbers. Just as Einstein observed that time was not an absolute, but depended on the observer's movement in space, and that space was not an absolute, but depended on the observer's movement in time, so it is now realised that numbers are not absolute, but depend on the observer's movement in restaurants. The first non-absolute number is a number of people for whom the table is reserved. This will vary during the course of the first three telephone calls to the restaurant and then bear no apparent relation to the number of people who actually turn up or to the number of people who subsequently join them after the show, match, party or gig or to the number of people who leave when they see who else has turned up. The second non-absolute number is the given time of arrival which is now known to be one of those most bizarre of concepts a reciprocal exclusion. A number whose existence can only be defined as being anything other than itself. In other words, the given time of arrival is one minute of time which is impossible that any member of the party will arrive. Reciprocal exclusions now play a vital part in many branches of maths, including statistics and accountancy, and also form the basic equations used to engineer the somebody else's problem field. The third and most mysterious piece of non-absoluteness of all lies in the relationship between the number of items on the bill, the cost of each item, the number of people at the table, and what they are each prepared to pay for. The number of people who have actually brought any money is only a sub-phenomenon in this field. The baffling discrepancies which used to occur at this point remained uninvestigated for centuries simply because no one took them seriously. They were, at the time, put down to such things as politeness, rudeness, meanness, flashness, tiredness, emotionality, or the lateness of the hour, and completely forgotten about on the following morning. They were never tested under laboratory conditions, of course, because they never occurred in laboratories, not in reputable laboratories at least. And so it was, only with the advent of pocket computers, that the startling truth became finally apparent, and it was this... Numbers written on restaurant bills within the confines of restaurants do not follow the same mathematical laws as numbers written on any other piece of paper in any other part of the universe. This single fact took the scientific world by storm. It completely revolutionised it. So many mathematical conferences got held in such good restaurants that many of the finest minds of a generation died of obesity and heart failure and the science of maths was put back by years. Slowly, however, the implications of the idea began to be understood. To begin with, it had been too stark, too crazy, too much what the man on the street would have said, oh yes, I could have told you that, about. Then some phrases like interactive subjectivity frameworks were invented and everybody was able to relax and get on with it. The small groups of monks who had taken up hanging around the major research institutes, singing strange chants to the effect that the universe was only a figment of its own imagination, were eventually given a street theatre grant and went away.